Every year, more than a million Aussies take a holiday on a cruise ship. Business is booming in the industry, with almost one in every 18 Australians choosing to go cruising. But have you ever wondered what laws apply if you have an accident or you become the victim of a crime when you're travelling through international waters? Well, it may not be as simple as it seems. Joining us from Melbourne, Australian Cruise Consultant of the Year, Cathy Pavlidis, and in Perth, maritime law expert Kate Lewins from my old uni, Murdoch University. Thank you both for your time. Firstly to you, Cathy, apart from the love boat and reruns of the love boat, what <laughs> makes cruising such a popular holiday choice? Well, I think it's the all-inclusive nature of a cruise holiday. Um, you can budget um, in advance. It's a great way for families to reconnect. Mum and Dad can have a holiday and, and you know the kids are being taken care of. You unpack once, someone cooks for you, someone cleans for you. Um, it, it's a great way to have a holiday. Uh, cruising really used to be something that just the very wealthy did, but now it seems to be a lot more affordable. That's correct, um, and thank God the wealthy is still cruising. Um, I think what's interesting to note, from now until 2027, there are 104 new ships um, on the order book, so oh, there's dear. definitely something there for everybody. OK. Cathy, what are the most common destinations for Aussies when they go cruising? Where well, typically are they heading? Well, they start off um, South Pacific and New Zealand because obviously they're on our doorstep, but they're getting more adventurous. Um, we're seeing a demand for luxury expedition cruising, whether it be the Kimberley region, Antarctica, the Arctic, and the Old Faithfuls, the Mediterranean, Alaska, the Caribbean, and um, there's literally no place that um, a cruise ship can't take you. Right, but we also know that things don't always go exactly to plan. There can be problems on the seas and they're always widely publicised. Let's go to you now, Kate. You're a maritime law expert. Mm. What are some of the problems that can arise? Um, well, obviously crimes and, and accidents are the, the primary things that can go wrong at sea. Yep. And so does it get into murky waters, depending on where you are, pardon the pun, as to which international law prevails? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, in, a, in a criminal context, it's a, you, in order to determine which law applies, you need to know where the ship is and where it's going. So if a ship's still in port uh, or within the territorial seas of a country, so within Australia's territorial seas, it's quite straightforward. Mm. Australian authorities have the right to um, investigate and prosecute. If the ship is heading out into beyond 24 nautical miles, it's what's called the high seas, and that's governed under the UN Convention of the Law of the Sea as being in the exclusive jurisdiction of the flag state. So the, any criminal matter on board primarily ought to be dealt with by the flag state. The okay. problem is that they're often a long way away yes. um, and so other authorities want to step in and they can do that in certain instances. A master can, uh, can call for the assistance of a, of a local police and then that local police force will have jurisdiction. The next port is another place that can also uh, gain jurisdiction to deal with whatever's happened on board the ship in between ports. Sure, we remember that well-documented case. Uh, it was earlier this year, actually, 23 members of an extended family losing, uh, leaving a cruise ship after a brawl on board. So what happens when an incident specifically like this one occurs? Well, because uh, that w the ship was on the high seas, as I understand it at the time, um, and then uh, came into Australian waters to drop the family off, um, it, it was clear that the police then were able to um, take over the investigation and charge the, um, charge the parties with, with uh, offences based on what happened at sea. But you do need the underlying laws of Australia to explicitly apply to uh, those sorts of situations as well. So there's issues of extraterritoriality. Um, in an international context that can make it really very complicated. Right, and Kate, a lot of people will remember the case of Diane Brimble, mm. uh, the mum who died in international waters while on mm. a cruise. Now, her former husband says that the inquiry into her death was just a waste of money. Uh, changes, he believes, are made, uh, need to be made to stop another tragedy in the future. What do you think? Do you think we need tighter laws governing what happens on cruise ships? Well, the reality is it's extremely difficult to do that because we're talking about a foreign ship. It's not owned by Australians. It's only got a transient um, connection with Australian. Uh, we, th there's only so much we can do under international law. I mean, there, certainly uh, at that inquiry, I recommended some small changes that could have been made. Um, the government's taken a fairly conservative view about that and, and you know, that's, mm. that's their right. Um, but it is, uh, it, it is a very difficult um, thing to manage internationally um, and, and that's, that's just the reality of it. It is difficult to, sure. to, um, 
to increase yeah. regulation. Uh, Kate, just before you go, uh, and Cathy, can, can a ship's captain really marry you, or is that only in the movies? <laughs> um, I think it depends on the international, on the laws of the of the flag state again, uh, right. as to what what the master's authorised to do there. But but technically speaking, yes. OK. Mm. Well, Cathy Pavlidis? Are you planning on it? No, well, I'm married. Yeah, but, yes. uh, <laughs> it, it, it seems such a romantic notion. Suddenly, you know, they're at the table, let's get married, the, ship, <laughs> the captain comes over and does it. And Kate Lewins in Perth, thank you both very much for your time. Have you been cruising with the family? No. And Have what, you? No, and every time I bring it up, Amy sort of, oh, cabin fever, maybe, we'll, you know, that sort of notion. Yeah, I know, I get, I get travel sickness, so yeah, okay. I, that's why I was concerned Although you know about on this big I know, been, you can't even tell. So is it... You wouldn't even know. No. no, you're just on a gigantic floating hotel. I get the appeal of it where you only unpack once. Yeah. And, but you get to see, you know, amazing parts of the world. Sort of so I totally cars, understand slides, it. slides, everything. The kids yeah, you got everything, absolutely right? You can get married on a bumper slide. Whatever Terrific.